If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, or if you require answers to specific health care questions or concerns, you should consult your physician or health care provider and not depend solely on information presented in this program. Welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where the suspense has finally ended. We're back. You know, I, I, those who are regulars know that we had a, uh, a survey that would determine which shows returned and which shows wouldn't. And as you can see, you guys went out and did the right thing, and we're back here with another season. And I, I think tonight I get chills when I look at the panel that I have here tonight. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little bit. I just, but just think of that now. Now, from let me go from left to right. I have Dr. Pamela Levine, orthopedist hand surgeon. Yes. Right. And which hospital? New York Methodist, Methodist Hospital. And she's going to be joining us. A brand new guest for a brand new season. Six season number sixteen. Wow. Can't believe it myself. Dr. <laughs> Bruce Garner, chief of rheumatology at the Lutheran Medical Center. Welcome. Nice to be back. Thank you. Welcome. Dr. Kanchmala Katapati, no stranger to this show. She's back here by popular demand at the first show. How are you today? Very good. Very, Very good. good. And as you know, this show is intended to help you with your medical questions. So you call in the, the number 718-499-6101. And that's a number that you can reach us. But you can also reach us on the email. For those who are computer savvy, if you write to askthedoctor at netny.net, we're going to take your questions, your email questions on the show. So as most of you know out there, what we like to do is scan the news. You know, what were the major events in medicine in the past week? And I have a couple of interesting ones. Now, the first one was with Valentine's Day, not too far away. We've talked about broken heart syndrome before, but there was new evidence that came out this week that this really is more deadly than we thought. And it usually a uh, breakup of a spouse, a, a death of a spouse, a loved one, and what it does is it sends all these hormones, all these uh, hormones that make the heart inactive or vulnerable to a heart attack if you have underlying heart disease. And what we thought with a uh, broken heart that it was more prominent in women, more prevalent in women, turns out that this disease, the heart attack stage, is more prevalent in men. And it had a 20 times increased risk of having a heart attack within the first week of having a, a close relative die. So it really is a sad syndrome. And what can you do with it? Well, the thing is, if you, kn if you know that people have had close relatives die, that you may want to prepare them. You may want to give them some medications, like some beta blockers or others that help the heart work a little bit easier. So there are things that can be done. So if, if any of you are in that uh, type of situation where something like this may be happening, it's a good idea to speak to your doctor and see if he wants to prescribe something or at least have some counseling so you understand what's, what's going to occur. Now, another study this week was that brain dementia, or Alzheimer's disease, you begin to see changes a lot earlier than we thought. People in their 40s are beginning to have memory changes when we thought this didn't occur until the 60s. So again, what can you do with this? You know, it's nice to know, what are you going to do? Well, there are things you can do because there are medications that can forestall or the beginning of Alzheimer's or can make the symptoms a lot less severe. But the key there is to take it very early in the course of the disease. So if you take these medications early, you may be able to have a longer quality of, a better quality of life for a longer amount of time. And then finally, there was an, uh, an ad about, an article about nicotine. And nicotine in smoke, obviously we know that you get it in smoke, it's got a lot of bad effects. Well, the nicotine itself, when taken in the form of a patch, makes the brain more alert and was able to improve the memory in Alzheimer's patients. Now, they're not sure exactly what the best way to deliver it, how much it is, but it's a, it's a at least it's a start, something to, to look into. Perhaps by prolonging the nicotine in the brain, you can get people to be thinking and more comprehensible. So, that's, uh, that's again, this was an exciting week. I want to thank Monsignor Bennett, who's hasn't, you know how many, one, one show he missed in 16 years. Monsignor, thank you, thanks for coming out here. And... Um, we have a very uh, interesting brain teaser tonight, the question. So this question deals with uh, athletes. And this is the question. Who is the first athlete to secure a $1 million endorsement package with a company? You know, you have all these, you know, Alice Rodriguez and all these guys, they get behind baseball bats, hats, and so on. But this guy was the first athlete to do this. So if you can tell me that, you're going to win a very valuable prize, which we'll tell you a little bit later. So. Um, what I want to do is take a break. I see the busy phone lines are bu very busy, as always. And then we come back. We're going to meet the doctors, learn a little bit about them, and then take your phone calls. 
So remember, the number to call is 718-499-6101. That's 718-499-6101. Don't go too far. We'll be right back. Place your business on TV by becoming a sponsor to one of Ned's family-friendly programs. See an increase in your revenue by reaching a potential audience of 4.3 million viewers in the tri-state area. We have a number of packages available and we'll even produce your commercial. For information, contact us at the number on your screen and get ready to see yourself on Ned. Welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where we're going to have orthopedic medicine, rheumatology, and internal medicine. And before we get into your calls, we've got a busy board lit up here. I want to meet Dr. Pamela Levine. Hi, Pam. Hi, how are you? And is it true that you have two people at home that are relatives uh, or nearby who watch the show? I do. My parents watch the That's show. That's Gary and Anita? Yes. Yeah, we want to welcome <laughs> them to the show. Hello. And it's a um, <laughs> pleasure to have your daughter here. And we're looking forward to a great show, and I understand they, were you at the River Cafe this weekend? We were for my mother's birthday. Happy yeah. birthday, Mom. Did you have a nice table? We had a beautiful water? table, oh, yes. Nice. We went there for New Year's Eve. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful restaurant. Beautiful restaurant, and um, happy birthday. And it's nice to see that you know there's a close family. Are there any other uh, siblings? I have an older sister. Is she a doctor? As well? She is a doctor, too. Very good, very good. What does she do? She does facial plastic surgery. Oh. Yep. All right. Makes everyone <laughs> look beautiful. <laughs> but um, the questions I have to you now, you do hand surgery. For the people out there, what, what does that entail? Like, what, what kind of things would you see? So what I specialize in is hand and upper extremity surgery, and I specialize in disorders like trigger fingers and carpal tunnel uh, syndrome, and also treat fractures of the upper extremity as well as tumors from the shoulder down. Okay, and, and why did you, you pick that out of all? Why, why? I like, I did my residency in orthopedic surgery, and mm -hmm. I liked hand surgery and upper upper extremity mm -hmm. surgery because there's a lot of precision and exactness that's uh, demanded and required of it. Do you play an instrument? I don't. Uh, no piano in the family? No. It's very unusual. Recorder. Re oh, that was <laughs> But like that was just fourth grade. That so. was uh, very good. <laughs> so we got a great guest here, Dr. Levine. She's ready to take your calls. Dr. Bruce Garner, what's new on the home front? Well, my oldest son is in from college, from Bucknell, for a few weeks, and um, he gets up every once in a while from bed to ask <laughs> his mother to give him some food and the car keys. And uh, our youngest son is, um, we're very proud of our youngest son, Kenny, who's a junior at Brooklyn Tech, was just um, inducted into the National Honor Society, where you have to evidence academic excellence and community service. So we're proud of both of our boys. And Very good. Excellent. Yeah. And Dr. Katapati, what's what's new on your home front? I know no heat, you said. No uh, heat in no the house. No heat in the house, yeah. Hopefully yeah, the that. guy's coming right now to yeah, fix yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're freezing. Yeah, and what do you do for hot the water? Day wasn't, uh, no, hot water's fine. Oh. Just the heat. <laughs> okay. And, and you live in Brooklyn too? I think all three people um, here yeah, live in Brooklyn yeah. too. Yeah, I live in Bear Ridge. But we go all over the city, and um, so we want to encourage you know, the callers from Manhattan and the Bronx and Staten Island to call in. We're going to see who our first caller is. I se can't believe season 16, Sweet 16. Who good is it be? Hello? Hello? Yeah, hi. Who is this, please? Yeah, I'm still waiting. Hello? Is this Maddie? Hello? Yes. This is Maddie. She's on a 12-second delay. The rest of the show is seven. <laughs> That's the problem. But, but uh, Maddie. Yes, doctor. How are you doing? Can you believe 16 seasons? <laughs> what? Can you believe we're here for 16 seasons? Yeah. All right. Not too impressed. Okay. <laughs> Very Maddie, what can we do for you tonight? Well, I just wanted to call in and say I'm feeling a little better. Oh, Maddie was a little blue. She's the official baker. Oh, she fell again, you know. Yeah, she fell and she yeah. had a little dizziness and. What are you gonna do? A little. Um, but thank God I'm doing pretty good right now. Thanks. I'm gonna ask yeah. as long as I got Dr. Katapati here. What do you think? What can you do? Maddie's getting on in age. She's about 80. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How old are you, Maddie? I'm 90. I'm gonna be 91. 90. Uh, 90. January 20th. Just sharp enough to call yeah. in with a question. That's great. But um, what can Maddie do about this unstable, the dizzy feeling dizziness. that she gets? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, dizziness can be a lot of different things. I mean, it can be serious if it's like a cardiac cause, mm -hmm. which is from the heart, or neurogenic, mm -hmm. something to do with the brain, or it could be just a benign vertigo. So, uh, you know, she needs to determine what exactly caused that. And if, uh, you know, if there's nothing wrong with the heart, there's no arrhythmia or 
you know, um, no, if the heart is pumping properly, then, you know, it might be just a matter of take adjusting. Sometimes uh, it's medications, you know, or uh, blood pressure medication. dizzy when she stands up too quickly. Yes, yes. So, so Maddie, you got to just take it a little easy. Get out yes. of bed slowly. Yes, doctor. And it's great uh, to have you on board. You've been here for all 16 seasons. Yeah, I was glad to see you and your brother, too. <laughs> Thank you, Maddie. Thanks yeah. a lot. Great to okay. talk to you. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year to you all. Okay, yeah. Maddie's a long time, very loyal listener. We have another one here. Pat, how are you, Pat? How are you doing, Doc? Pat, good, thank you. How you been? Oh, very good, Doc. Pat, let me ask you this question. Now, the trivia question, I don't know if you heard it. Who was the first athlete to have signed a $1 million endorsement package? Who was that? A $1 million endorsement contract? Yeah, he signed a $1 million. You know, like, like Reggie Jackson might sign endorsing baseball bats or right, hats. Right. I'm going to go with um, Yogi Berra. Yes. Pat's going with Yogi Berra. Is it Yogi Berra? You can almost hear that sound effect. I like that. But hey, Pat, uh, yeah, big, I, I'm on the road. I'm still working. But Big Vinny called me. He told me he's around. Oh, right, thank you. Let me give you, give you a call. Uh, big Vinny's a good I was, fan of the show. I was talking the other night, and he looked down my throat, and he said my tonsils are all red. He said that's from the the reflux, and he said to me that he feels. I asked him about the dizziness. He says. It definitely, reflux can definitely cause dizziness. Which, which, now, doctor, which, which doctor was that? A doctor in Staten Island. Uh huh. Okay, let me go, let me see if Dr. Bruce Garner, what he thinks about dizziness um, and reflux. I think there are a number of things which can cause dizziness. Certainly, there's irritation due to the reflux. It might cause a problem which could lead to dizziness. So it's not unlikely. Sometimes the medications that one takes to avoid reflux could have side effects. Um, which can result in dizziness or gastrointestinal distress. So I think it's certainly a possibility, but I think you just had an excellent um, discussion of various things which can cause vertigo by Dr. Katapati, and those things should be looked into. Right, right. Pat, okay. how have you been? What did you do for New Year's? Uh, we had a party at my sister's house, and uh, my little daughter uh, celebrated her first birthday on Christmas. I got a Christmas. Uh, Beautiful. Adriana, happy birthday, Adriana. Excellent, excellent. And I heard, I heard of a good restaurant, by the way. It's uh, the 23 Club on uh, 4th Avenue. Anybody hear of that? And where, Doc? Where? I think it's between four, uh, 89th and 4th in Brooklyn, in Bay Ridge, the 23 uh, Pop Club. Ponte Vecchio, Ponte Vecchio, Doc. That's where you got to go. Nice restaurant. But, Pat, so keep listening, and it's great Thanks. to have you. Great, great to have you back, Doc. We're, we're going to be here through March 27th, so set your calendar, okay? Great. Uh, happy birthday, Big Vinny from 6th Avenue, Big too. Vinny, happy birthday. Take care, man. Thanks, Doc. i got to say that, otherwise. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow. <laughs> Hello? Hi, Dr. Garner. Thank you for taking my call. Hi, Rosa. How are you? Hi. God bless all of you, first of all, for being on the show and answering our questions. Uh, it's wonderful to see you again. I always read your, line, your, your column in the tablet. Oh, thank you. This is my first time, so I'm a little nervous. A little nervous. Where, where are you calling us from? Which neighborhood? Brooklyn, Which in Bath Beach. Bath Beach. Any places yes. out there that we'd like to eat at? I'm telling you, you just said 23. That place is on 5th Avenue and 89th Street. That's why I couldn't find it. I was going yes. up and down the block. I didn't know what was it's going on. on. Fifth, but they're not really open yet, but you should call them. The place is incredible. That's what You're I hear. You're going to have the best food ever. You should go there. I know. I know the place. Yep. 23 Club. I Yes, um, 23 Club. They're just opening up now, yes. We're going to be we're gonna be going there. And um, what did you do for New Year's? Uh, we, well, we did a very Italian thing, and which is uh, you eat a lot, of course, until midnight, and then you go do up. a lot of crazy <laughs> noise, and then you go outside and break all your old dishes. This is nice, very nice. It's <laughs> nice to get together like that. Yes, it is. It was. So tell me, what's the problem, Rosa? Uh, well, I have a little something. It's... um. It's a little weird because it's uh, it's a pain that comes on in the chest, not on the left side, but it comes on on the right side, and it and it doesn't come on often, but it comes on, you know, with, within a certain amount of time, and it and I feel it coming on. It's like I know it's going to come on, and I try to stop it, mm -hmm. but um, it just gets me more intense, and I try to stop, but I try to calm myself and say, okay, calm down, you know, take a deep breath, it's going to go away. You know, and then I drink, uh, I, um, a lot of times I have to drink, like, cold water, 
to kind of shock that pain, you know, from going away. How old and, are you? Oh, goodness, i got to say you're in the air. So, uh, I'll, I'll put it off the air. How old are you? <laughs> I'm 61. All right, it's turn okay. the TV and back on. <laughs> That's all right. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, it's okay. So everybody knows what, how old I am anyway. But I want to ask uh, Dr. Katapati, what do you think we could do for Rosa? Right side of chest pain. She said, right? Um, right side, yes, right side. Right. And how long have you had it? It's been a few years. I can't, you know, I don't get it. You know, it's not that often, but it comes on an occasion. Right. And I it's mean, something that it just worries me because it just comes on and I feel it, and it stays sometimes as, as much as a could be as much as a minute. Is it related to food at all? I mean, you said cold water relieves it, but something brings it on, like. Um. No, I don't know what brings it on. Actually, to tell you the truth, it could be different times. You know, I. Mm, um, I, I don't really know what brings it on. No. Okay, I mean, you know, we we talked about acid reflux early on in the show. I mean, it could, uh, if it's more central, uh, it could just be acid reflux. Uh, it could be a musculoskeletal pain, you know, which is, uh, you know, um, arthritic you pain. Um, do, do you no. think? <laughs> <laughs> which, it, which? it could be arthritis causing the pain. Um, you know, and right if, if you if you've smoked or anything in the past, you might want to get a chest X-ray just to make sure that there's no pathology in the lung. Okay. Thank Rosa, you. it's I a tough one it. though. It's a tough one, but it sounds like it's been going on a while, so it's not life-threatening, but it's uncomfortable, I'm sure. So. Yes, it is. You're right. Anyway, okay. I hope you have a happy new year and it resolves. Okay. And a happy new year. Thank you so much, Doctor. Be Thank well. you. Now, I want to get Dr. Pamela Levine. She's sitting here. We got her in. And, you know, we're paying a lot of money to bring her here, and we're yeah, not getting yeah, any yeah. response. So I want to um, so let's tell us about media, uh, carpal uh, tunnel. Tell so what carpal bit. tunnel syndrome yeah. is is compression of the median nerve at the wrist. Mm -hmm. and, Let me um, see that because what do you mean? Right, right here at the wrist. And a lot Excuse of times. No. Sorry. I don't. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, yes. And what they believe causes it is actually tendonitis. So you have the tendons in your fingers that bend your fingers, and they all run here in your wrist. And sometimes the tendons get enlarged or inflamed, and no one really knows why, but when they get enlarged and inflamed, they can cause compression of the nerve, and that causes pain in your hand, as well as numbness and tingling in your thumb, index, and, and uh, middle fingers. Those three? Those three only, really. And what does it seem like? Um Typists, the people at the computer a lot, they seem to get it a lot. Um, you know, the studies have shown that it's actually not a work-related huh. injury, that there are certain people who are more predisposed to, do, to get tendonitis than others, and those are hmm. the ones who really develop the carpal tunnel syndrome. Interesting. So it's not, you can't just blame it on the job. That's very not interesting. Really. Okay. Not usually. Very good. So we're going to get all conspiracy <laughs> theories now here that she's <laughs> representing the uh, big government. Right. And, uh, okay. Wow. But let's see what Lisa's got to say. Hi, Lisa. Hello. Lisa, how are you? Okay. I'm so happy that you're back. Oh, I, I know. We were nervous. I miss you so very much. Did you so. fill out the survey? Uh, yes. You see, this is what kept us but on. I'm not kidding. I know, because I, I, I really think that you're all so great. Uh, I have I have a question. Maybe you can help me. Sure. What's the question? I'm 74 years old, and I realize that sometimes I forget. So I'm not too sure if it's normal or something is wrong. Like, for instance, I go to the refrigerator to get something. I open the refrigerator. I forgot what I want. Or I'm sitting in the living room, and I say, let me go get my checkbook. I go to the kitchen. What did I want? Mm -hmm. So... Um, I, I just want to know if it's normal because of my age, because uh, I only take uh, one medication for my blood pressure, and I, I've been taking it for years, so I don't think this is the one that causes it. So if it's something serious, or it's my age, or it's normal, this can I have your... Uh, it comes up fr frequently, this question. Actually, in next week's tablet, they're going to have a story on that in the, from the column uh -huh. about things you can do. And, and I'll start with the doctors here that see patients every day that have yes. early forgetfulness or, you know, um, and, and what, what do you think? Is that age-related? Is that... Well, first of all, you need to make sure, um, you know, you need to have some blood tests uh, to look for preventable causes, you know. Uh, it's very common, actually, New York Times ha had an article not too long ago mm -hmm. Uh, because vitamin B12 deficiency, that's very common um, in the elderly. Vitamin what? B12. Vitamin B12. Uh-huh. 
Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, vitamin B12 deficiency can cause um, dementia or forgetfulness in the elderly. So, you know, you can, you, there's a bunch of other things, you know, thyroid uh, function, you need to get checked and uh, certain infections. So you, you need to have blood tests because these are very easily co corrected. I, I did, I did recently have my blood test and um, the doctor told me that um, I have, uh, you know, I need vitamin D as David. D. Okay, yeah, why so that's D the only a, problem yeah. that I had in my blood test. Well, you ask the doctor if he specifically checked for vitamin B12. So if you check vitamin B12 and that's normal, um, you know, then uh, you need to look into other causes. Um, you know, what you're talking about is the age-related uh, dementia, which is called senile dementia. Um, I mean, you know, if you see a neurologist, uh, they can do um, certain testing in the office, you know, to see how bad it is, how serious it is. Um, and if the preventable causes have been ruled out, then, you know, uh, they'll decide if it's uh, senile dementia. I mean, if you have vascular disease elsewhere, meaning, um, you know, a blood vessel disease, it can cause vascular dementia. That means the blood vessels in the brain can be affected. But there are things to do, Lisa, like joining church groups, you mm -hmm. know, being social, doing crossword puzzles, eating breakfast with the opposite hand, or your right eat, eat with your left hand, and see, it helps to keep the brain working yes you know, and it's yes being active both physically and I mentally. I am very active yeah no on mentally too like Dr. Garner said doing puzzles and you know just uh, just like your body needs exercise your brain needs exercise okay so but my, my question is age means something well it could a age related dementia um, you know is is uh, a differential meaning it could be a cause but you need to be evaluated uh, to okay. make sure that's but the you know, cause. You can't just assume you know, it's the age. It's not necessarily right. Alzheimer's mm -hmm. though either because it's, it, Alzheimer's has a aggressive um, pattern that interferes with your life. You know, not merely putting the keys in the wrong place or forgetting someone's name. No, S nothing like that. No, so, you know, there may be ways you can tune things up and that's maybe all you need. So definitely see the neurologist yes. or your family doctor and he'll refer you to a neurologist. Okay. And read next week's tablet. We'll talk about it. Okay. Okay, great to hear from Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Hi, Daniel. Daniel? Yes. How are you? You're on the, you're on the air. All right. Thank you. How are you doing yeah. tonight? Good evening, and congratulations on your show. Thank you very much. Where are you calling us from? Um, Bay Ridge. Bay Ridge. Where do you like to eat out there? Uh, there's a lot of good pizza out here. Do you like that, um, what's that name? Uh, Gino. Gino's. Gino's. There's a, a one called Del Costo. It's pretty good. Where's that? Third Avenue. Huh. What's the name of it? Del Costo. Oh, Del Costo. It's pretty. It's, it's, it's pretty good. They got good stuff grandma's there. Grandma's on Third Avenue. Yeah, there's also that. I like that grandma's part. <laughs> Interesting. Anyway, um, what can we do for you? Um, well, my mother was diagnosed uh, a, a while back. Um, years ago now with the condition called dermatomyositis. Okay. Um, the, this weekend she wasn't doing the very good and she's back in the hospital. How old is she? Uh, she's 72. Okay, let me just ask the rheumatologist. Dermatomyositis, quick, uh, one minute on what it is. Dermatomyositis, very quickly, it, it's a condition where there's inflammation of the muscles and it usually affects the muscles closest to the neck and closest to the hips, so your thighs and your upper arms. And it can cause significant weakness because the muscles are inflamed. It also can come on with a rash. That's why it's called dermato, dermato meaning skin. And the rash can be what they call a heliotrope rash around the eyes, or you can get little dots over your fingers called Gottron's patches, or you can sometimes get what they call in the mantle distribution, a, a rash on the chest, which can be but quite what would itzy. cause her to be admitted to the hospital? Um, probably the muscle enzymes, the muscle inflammation went up very high and she became very weak. It can affect all muscles actually in the body. You have to even worry, sometimes people aren't able to breathe oh. properly because it affects the muscles controlling the lungs. And pneumonia maybe? pneumonia, or sometimes people aren't able to swallow and they get aspiration pneumonia where the food goes down the wrong pipe. The good thing is if they catch it in time, and it sounds like they did, it's very treatable with various combinations of medications such as prednisone and other medications are sometimes given, such as um, 
something called IVIG or methotrexate right, or azathioprine, right. but how well controlled has she been over the past two years? Um, well, not a, according to the specialist, not very well. I mean, she, according to him, it's, it's difficult to, mm. to get good control. Well, I think they have to keep trying to find the right combination. The good news is most patients do respond to some combinations of medications and the disease is able to be controlled. So hopefully they're going to get your mother out of the hospital and feeling well again very soon. Daniel, I hope that helps a lot. You want to take a guess at the quiz? Um, the quiz? Yeah, the, the quiz was, who was the first athlete to sign a million dollar endorsement package with, an, with a company? Um, you know, I actually believe it's um, a person named Carter, Don Carter. Could it be Don Carter? He was a bowler. As a bowler, could it be Don Carter? <laughs> the neighbors are complaining because they're outside <laughs> hearing this noise and we don't get it in here. But uh, if there were uh, sound effects, you were absolutely correct. Don Carter. It was Don Carter? Don Carter. That's I, very good. This was faith yeah. that he was calling, you know? Fantastic. Tell us who Don Carter was. I think he couldn't take the excitement. <laughs> was, was Don Carter the, the, the bowler who died this week? He just week? died this I week. I in the Times, oh. yeah, in the obituary. He um, was the first yeah. player, the first athlete to get a million-dollar contract with one of the um, companies, with one of the um, makes the company Major ball. Yeah. Ball Ebony ball. or uh, one of those. But I, I don't know if he held on or not. Did Daniel go? Because he's got that hand-engraved plaque. If no, actually, I, I was wondering how much was a million dollars worth back then. But you were, you were thinking about that for like a minute. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What, what I could have told you. Right. Line. <laughs> Every eight years it doubles that. So you figure eight, if, if about 40 years, so you got two, four, eight. It's about 50, 60 million dollars. Wow. wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. So are you, where are you going to put the plaque? Um... We've got a few days to decide. He he's gonna <laughs> I like he's deliberate. You know, this man does not make a rash decision. <laughs> Daniel, we're very happy that you won, and we hope um, you'll tell your mother about it, and that she'll be happy. And we'll, we're going to get your name now, okay? <laughs> we'll get your name and address, and we'll, we'll rush that thing out to you. Thank you, and I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Car uh, Garner, and uh, I love your show. Thank you. Thanks again. Take care. That's amazing that he threw yeah. that in, that uh, you know? <laughs> Got yeah. He wasn't yeah, even going to, yeah. yeah. And then he says, caught it, done. You should try for Jeopardy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to take a break in a, in a couple of minutes. I got Mike next, but I got to go back to Dr. Levine here because I want to, you know, look, you got a crowd watching. I know this here. <laughs> so so uh, the question I want to know is trigger finger. Okay. Trigger finger, what so is that? So trigger finger, as we were talking about carpal tunnel syndrome, yeah. which is tendonitis, trigger finger is tendonitis of that same tendon of those same tendons that bend the fingers. Mm -hmm. And as opposed to carpal tunnel where the nerve is compressed at this location, trigger fingers is tendonitis of those same tendons and they get compressed right here as the tendon is going Can into the that? finger. Can you see that? Hold that up. Yeah. Right here. So a lot of people will come in and their finger will stay in a bent position mm -hmm. and when they try and straighten it out, it clicks or locks. And they think the problem is at this joint, at this knuckle joint, but the problem is really lower down, really here in their palm. So it's a pain. what do you have to do? And so oftentimes we can treat it with anti-inflammatories or an injection of some steroids. But the problem with the steroid injections is that if you give too much steroid injections, mm. the steroid weakens the tendons and the oh. tendons can rupture. So usually after two injections, the next step is surgery. So it's a small mm. outpatient procedure. So, and a lot of people have this, right? A uh, lot of people have so this, So those yes. out there with a finger like this should be um, Well, they should be you? evaluated. A lot of... Um, there's other conditions like Dupuytren's contractures, which now has a commercial on TV of that Zyaflex where ah. the, the man is painting and can't because his fingers are bent. So it's important to differentiate the two diagnoses and so that way the appropriate treatment can Did any famous artists or musicians have this? Just as a possible um, trivia, no? I'm sure, you but no. Beethoven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so who's next on this? So let's go. Mike. Hey, Mike. Yes. How are you doing? Fine. Were you surprised about Don Carter, the bowler? Yeah, I, I, I was uh, very excited about that. That's <laughs> I'm talking, I got the whole Brooklyn. I don't know what we're going to do tonight here. But, uh, yeah, but, but uh, he was for Brunswick, you know. Brunswick, I couldn't remember. Actually, uh, yeah. Lutheran is an old bowling factory, I believe. That's Lutheran yeah. is the old Brunswick bowling ball That's factory. That's right. Yeah. So uh, was he, he was from Jersey. Where is he from? I think St. Louis originally. Yeah. But there was a Brooklyn bowler, famous. Famous Brooklyn bowler? Yeah, Johnny. 
Johnny Petraglia. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I, I used to bowl on uh, Shell Lanes in Brooklyn. Uh, and Maple Lanes. Who goes out? I mean, in the old days, you'd go on a date, you'd enjoy bowling. Have you been on a bowling date lately? Oh, no, uh, no more. Not recently. No. But <laughs> I had a bowling party. Oh, you had a bowling party? Uh, daughter, yeah. Yeah, I used to bowl for Zenith League. Zenith Leagues? Yes, what? the Zenith League. On wow. Shell Lanes. And Shell Lanes on, on Shell Road? Sure. Did they close the Maple Lanes? I no, think they still open. Still I don't still think open. so. I think it's still open. I never could find a ball. It would like be f for somebody with fingers that were like this big, you <laughs> know what I mean? Oh. Y you ever drop it on your foot one time? No, I never oh. did. I'm that lefty. Hurts. I'm a lefty. So, Mike, what can we do for you? Well, my, my question was that, that I've been, been treated many, many years already for, uh, like, my lower back has been bad. I have uh, uh, arthritis, uh, herniated discs, and so forth, and stuff like that. And I have a son-in-law that's a surgeon, uh, surgeon, uh, spine surgeon, and he explained to me, he says, lose your belly. <laughs> i gotten big because I quit smoking over six years now. Well, I'm, I'm, Mike, I'm going yeah. to get an opinion from Dr. Levine and then Dr. Garner on yeah, this. Yeah, because I get very excruciating pain, and I've been treated lately. You know, how much do that. you weigh? I weigh about 310. And how tall are you? 6'1". Okay. What do you think, Dr. Levine? I think his son-in-law is right. I think that losing weight is important, but... I think in addition to losing weight, if you work on strengthening your back muscles and strengthening your stomach muscles, that will also help with some of the pain that you're having in your back as well as making you more flexible. Because a lot of, the t a lot of times, the back pain you're having is more muscular in origin. So the more you stretch out those muscles and make them stronger, the less pain you'll have. And what do you think, Dr. Garner? It sounds like um, your son-in-law is very intelligent, as is Dr. Levine. I think you want to try and do natural things to try and decrease the pain. Medication can be, can have its own set of problems and may not be definitive in, in changing your problem for the better and curing yourself. So I would listen to what Dr. Levine and your son-in-law say. Mm -hmm. Mike? I appreciate that. Yes, and uh, I'm, I'm 58 years old. I've been doing the same job for almost mm -hmm. 39 years. Wow. What do you do? Uh, maintenance in the school. You know what we got to do, though, is you got to lose that. Now, you remember yeah. we had Dr. Stevens on, who does the bariatric surgery. Yeah. There may be an opportunity for you there, because, oh. Oh. you know, where they show that people don't, mm -hmm. they gain the weight back, no matter what you do. After two years, everybody's right. got the same weight back. Right. The only real thing that helped mm -hmm. was the bariatric surgery of some mm -hmm. type. And maybe if it's hurting your back, mm -hmm. this could be curative for that. Oh. Think oh, about it. We'll talk yes, I would think about it very much, and I've been watching your show so many years. Well, it's great to have you on board. I'm glad. Yeah. Is this the first time you got through? Yeah, my, my wife and I, we turn to it all the time because it's the prayer channel, and uh, and I says, uh, Dr. Garner, Methodist is where uh, my mother had been treated many, many years. I was wondering how many years you were there. Oh, at Methodist, I'm there about six and a half years now. Oh, okay. I was at St. Vincent's for 25 years all before. Right, right. Yeah, we, we always uh, went to, uh, we came from downtown in the area. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So, look, you ever eat a Queen restaurant? Uh, yeah. That's yeah. a nice place. Sure, you sure. Good? Court Street. Oh, Delicious. Old yeah. time Italian. If you want to try a good pie, I'm, I'm over here on St. Dominic's on 75th Street. You like that place? Yeah, you call it Mike's Pan Pizza. You you would love it. You want the grandma pie? Ask your brother. She'll love it. Come on down. Okay. <laughs> 75th and where? 75th and, and 20th. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Right. I love his Spamoni right Gardens out there. St. Dominic's Church. Thanks a lot, Mike, and You're call welcome. back. Thank you very much. I will. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Thank you. How long can you keep saying Happy New Year? Do you know? I don't know. Like after I don't know the protocol. <laughs> oh, after the first show. Right? First show, yes. <laughs> like a Jane is holding on patiently. Hi, Jane. Hi, how are you? How Happy are you New doing? Year, everyone. Happy <laughs> New Year. Where are you calling us from, Jane? Middle Village, Queens. Middle Village. What's out there? Is that the one with the, my two sons or something? No, we have... Um, a London Lenny's, we have... All um, right, London Lenny's. Right, Woodhaven Boulevard. You familiar with that place? Beautiful. On the b boulevard there, the prices are very reasonable. Right, and they have the Woodhaven House, which used to be Kate Cassidy's. That's an, what is that, is that a bar or a restaurant? Both. Nice, nice. So that's yeah. where, you, where would you go if you wanted to just relax for a couple hours? Friday's, maybe. Friday's. Yeah. What that's is that? further down on Woodhaven. What would you order? Well, I like their um, their shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie. All yeah. Right. Interesting. Did so uh, you get it? 
Did you get somebody to answer the quiz? Yeah, well, I'll repeat the question. The, somebody answered it. The question was, who was the first athlete to have a $1 million endorsement policy? Who, who are you going to say? Bobby Hull. The, the hockey player? Yes. No. <laughs> but but I, I think it's a good guess. It's a good guess because he played a long enough time where $1 million would have been a significant sum. It was Don Carter. Do you know who that is? Oh, okay. He I have just to ask my husband. All right. He died this week. Oh, really? He's a famous bowler. Oh, okay. Wow. I, 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 the, the words are there, but the spirit. <laughs> I mean, okay, wow. I mean, it, uh, but well, anyway. I mean, no, I, when I say wow, I'm like, you know, surprised. You know what no. I mean? No, no, I know. It's good. It's good. It's so, um, what I want to ask you a question. Yeah, what's the question, please? Every time I have low sodium, my A1C comes back like 5.5, 5, 5, mm. 5, 7, comes back X. Every time the sodium goes low. Let's see, Dr. Katapati, why does, this, why does that happen? Her, he her hemoglobin A1C, which is a diabetes test, comes back very normal or low when she's got a low sodium. Her electrolytes are not. Is there any under Well. Uh, why do you have low sodium, first of all? I don't know. It, it happens um, periodically, like every couple of years. Huh. I'm thinking mm -hmm. it's, uh, the doctor said it was hyponatremia. Hyponatremia, yeah. That could be caused from my thyroid, right? Uh, well, it, there's a lot of different causes for hyponatremia. Uh, what medications are you taking? I take um, <coughs> cardia for blood pressure. Uh, what blood pressure medications? Because some, if you're on like a diuretic, like a water pill, no, that can cause you're not on it. Uh huh. What you just take cardia? Okay. What else? Restore. Okay. Metformin. And um, Arimidex for um, the breast okay. cancer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kids. And Herceptin, which I get infusion from every three weeks. That's it. Okay. I think it's one of those weird things. Uh, I'm not sure there's a definite yeah, explanation. No, I'm not sure. All I mean these medications, you know. The yeah, it doesn't sound like any of the medications you're on is causing it. Because uh, the last A1C I had done, yeah, my um, sodium was a little uh, was like 143 instead of 134, mm -hmm. and my A1C went up to 6.0. Which mm -hmm. is still not bad. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, 6.0 is fine. But, but 5.5 5 is much better. So it's 5.7. Okay. Yeah. But either one is good, you know, that, um, but we'll think about it. Maybe yeah, we'll, we'll try sure and come back it. next week and talk a little bit about it. So, okay. But have a happy new year and hope, hope everything is well for you. I want to ask another question before I go. My husband has a, he had a detached retina. Uh -huh. So he has to get the New York Eye Infirmary. Mm -hmm. And now a month later, he has a cataract. He has a gas bubble in his eye. How long do you think that takes to dissolve? That's a tough one. Now we're going to have to, we're going to have to get, um, I'm going to get that, we're going to get the answer for that. <laughs> Dr. It takes a while to. These things can take a while. I don't know. It's not overnight kind of thing. Is it, and he's has, his vision is impaired? Yeah, you can't see out of that eye at all. He has a cataract Can now. you do me, I'm going to ask an uh, ophthalmologist this week. If you call back next week, I'm going to give you the answer. Okay. Okay, have a great week. You too. Bye. Thank you. My daughter's an ophthalmologist. Oh, there you go. Excellent ophthalmologist. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break now. Now remember, tonight's number is 718-499-6101, and our topics are orthopedic hand surgery, rheumatology, and internal medicine. Don't go far. We'll be right back. Place your business on TV by becoming a sponsor to one of NET's family-friendly programs. See an increase in your revenue by reaching a potential audience of 4.3 million viewers in the tri-state area. We have a number of packages available and we'll even produce your commercial. For information, contact us at the number on your screen and get ready to see yourself on NET. Welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our guests are Dr. Pamela Levine, orthopedic hand surgeon, Dr. Bruce Garner, rheumatologist. In internal medicine, we have Dr. Katapati. Now we're going to go to the questions. I, I'm going to take your email questions, but I want to go to Rosemary first. Hi, Rosemary. Hi, how are you? Great to hear from you. <laughs> Happy New Year. How was the break for you? Do you know oh, that? It, well, of course, I missed you, but I saw you on Fox News since you're all over the place. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you but are. I, 
You were on Fox News. What do you think of their makeup? What of their makeup? <laughs> it's kind of I don't. You look a little washed out on Fox. <laughs> they, don't, they don't, you look better on this show. I know because I feel more part. You know this. Yeah, I'm maybe that's it. I, or they just you looked a little pale. Look, yeah. I have a couple of things. I have them written down. Happy Sweet Sixteen. Congratulations on your new grandson. Oh, thank you, Nevin. I got to give his name. Uh, yes, Samuel. Hey. What is it? Samuel Hudson Stevens. Right. Like <laughs> I the know Supreme Court Justice. A tablet. Very nice. And I saw you on Fox News, and you have a wonderful panel. Oh, this is a great panel, yeah, isn't I it? I love this panel. Dr. The Levine and the Peters, the, uh, your brother. Who? What? What'd you tell him to be quiet? He's not making any jokes. Oh, we'll get him. <laughs> I'm playing the <laughs> role of have, devoted you sidekick in the this evening. professional mode. He's being professional tonight. You know, he worked in in comedy clubs. Oh well, he's hysterical. I know. Yeah. I, I've seen him on here before. <laughs> so um, the between the two of you, it's unbelievable. Rosemary, one of our favorite. Yeah, you know, the one that called one of these people. Did anyway. you ever? Did you ever buy the shirt, Rosemary? No, I never did, but I want to. Is it still on sale? I'm trying to get. W I'm trying <laughs> to see if there's one left. There may be one that fell off. The oh yeah. Yeah, the truck <laughs> at the <laughs> time of the one, Especially for that great price of sixty dollars. But that was a donation. <laughs> it was a yeah, I know it's a donation. I want to buy the shirt. Yeah. Definitely, I do. I guess do. a rose by any other name is a right. rose that donation for sixty dollars. <laughs> I wouldn't give it. No, no offense <laughs> to the fair channel. But it's a I lot love of money. EWTN. I love it. So if I don't donate, they're not going to have the show. Anyway, this is my question. Yes. Hiatal hernia spasms causing a regular heartbeat. Hmm. Did you ever, do you ever hear of something like this? The guy took out a potty. She said hiatal hernia. So can can that cause like a regular heartbeat? It goes into heartbeat. spasms, and some, supposedly it hits some sort of a nerve that hits the, somehow the heart, and the heart could have like an irregular heartbeat. You know, not uh, anything like a you know, AFib or whatever is congestive heart failure, but like a little, you know, did uh, you ever no, hear it? No, not by itself, hiatal hernia by you itself. Ne yeah, okay. unless you have some kind of, you know, underlying cardiac or, you right. know, cardiac Right, you've never disease. heard of anything like that, okay. Oh, I mean, you have the hiatal hernia? Well, I have a hiatal hernia. Now, they tell me that I, s I have a funny, it, it wouldn't, it, he said it was a spasm. It feels like a funny kind of feeling, like a flutter. But then I went through electrocardiogram and uh, echocardiogram. You know, nothing shows up. But then when I went on the computer, <laughs> I was researching this, and they say that it could happen, that there's some nerve that could, I don't know. No, I mean, how? first of all, do, is it a huge hiatal hernia, or it's just a... No, it's not too much. Yeah, no. And it I, happens once in a while. It. Then I, if I drink water, it goes away. Uh, well, maybe uh, you should, uh, you know, if you're having flutters and palpitations, maybe right. you should do a 24-hour Holter monitor. Okay. Uh, just idea. to see that you don't have any arrhythmia. I right. Mean, and maybe, maybe if there's enough pressure, down. could the vagal nerve be stimulated? You know, maybe there's some way that she could just bring a heart to a stop from, you know, and then realize when it I picks mean, up. The hiatal hernia to cause anything in the uh, chest should be huge. I mean, I mean it can cause acid reflux, but other right. than that. But other than that, you never heard of anything. Because yeah. they I say that it may spasm, cause, I don't know. This is what I, I heard, I read this online, not my doctor. Didn't yeah. tell I, mean I like the 24 hour holter monitor. Right. Okay. Yeah. And if you drink a lot of coffee, maybe you can cut that yeah, down. Yeah, I but do. <laughs> Rosemary, so it's great to hear from you. All right. You ne have a good season. Next week? Yes, next week. Take care. <laughs> okay, bye. 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 Okay, I've got emails from around the country here. We first go way out to Pennsylvania, which is a question regarding groin inner thigh tightness. Mm -hmm. And uh, who is this from? Patrick. He wants to know the following. He's got these symptoms where it gets worse after sitting down. Walking doesn't hurt at all, but it feels better most of the time. So when he walks, it's better. When he sits down, it hurts. I'm going to ask the, the two the orthopedists and the rheumatologist to step up. It sounds like he, he would, I think he was also working out or lifting weights, and it sounds like he had a muscle strain. Mm -hmm. Probably, you know, lifted weights, maybe uh, pulled, you know, a muscle. Um, he also mentions taking antibiotics, taking Cipro. And Cipro can cause more tendonitis, mm -hmm. um, not really muscle pain, but it's possible when you have some tendon, tendonitis, which is inflammation, it can also, you know, have That's some right. of that, you know, cause some of that pain mm -hmm. as well. It sounds muscular in origin, and I think he has to reevaluate uh, the type of workout he's doing, how much pressure he's putting on the lower part of the body, whether he's using weights, whether he's doing mostly cardio with running, and how much pressure he's putting on the lower back and thigh region. So I would look for 
as, as Dr. Levine said, something logical such as a muscle strain. So he says, could it be my thigh, my groin, my pelvis, my back? It could be. The answer is yeah. Could yes. be all of those. Probably he should rest, ice, you know, and take it easy for a while. Stop lifting weights. Mm -hmm. And call us back and let and us know. Send us an email. Let us know how you're doing. One other, we're up to Boston now. It's from Neela. Yeah. And she's 17 years old and very scared because she has a, a, a lump, a hard lump under the skin of her tailbone area. She said it doesn't drain or no pain, swelling, redness. It's just there. And she's thinking it could be a lymphoma or some kind of tumor that it she should be worried about. I've got a hard lump over the tailbone. Well, I think you're always concerned. And, and that's something that we're best not to advise you on. I think you have to go see your doctor who's going to investigate it. Well, she went to the family doctor's okay. an update. And he said it was a cyst. However, when going to my surgeon, he said, I don't need surgery. And he thinks, he does not think it is a cyst. So I'm confused. Well, I'm a little confused also. I think she mm. has to, that's what she has to ask her doctors, exactly what is it. And at the age of 17, I know at the age of 47, my wife won't let me go to the doctor alone. So I think perhaps she should go with her parents mm. or um, somebody else who can help her ask the right questions and help her understand best yeah. what the doctor Good. is saying. Dr. Levine? also important when she goes to the doctor if she again to obviously go with someone I think that's always helpful so you have a another set of ears to hear the same answer mm -hmm. but if she's not satisfied with the answer if she's still nervous e either pursue ask more questions mm -hmm. sort of stay talk to the doctor until she does feel comfortable till he can sort of put all of her fears to mm -hmm. rest so that's good answers there let's go now to Rita who's waiting patiently hi Rita hi how are you tonight? Uh, all right, thank you. Could you turn down? There's got a little noise in the background. Yes, I just turned. I know the television. Oh, okay. What were you watching? Dr. Garner. Oh, and very the good. Doctors. Very good. Yes. Okay, I never know. You know, the uh, idol yes. and stuff. Yes, so I was watching this. Yes. What can we do for you tonight? Uh, I've been getting headaches. Uh, oh, gee, for years. But the last few months, uh, they've been really, really severe. I've been to a neurologist. I've been for acupuncture. I've had um, I had Botox, I had nerve block, I've been to chiropractor. So they think it's migraines? No, they, 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 they're not diagnosing it. I've, I've been to an ear, nose, and throat man, and um, there's nothing wrong with my sinuses. So let's ask Dr. Kind of, I mean, isn't that Botox usually for migraine when they give it in the head, in the muscles? Well, she was, the doctor, her name is Dr. Drexler, she wanted Around to try it. But and it didn't work at all. It didn't work. Yes, it no. Did. You know, there could be so many different reasons for your headache. What did he say it was? She, she, she didn't diagnose it. She didn't diagnose it. No. Did they do some imaging, like CAT scan, MRI? Yes, I had a brain uh, MRI. I had a CAT scan. Negative? Yes, and then last week I had a scan of my sinuses. Okay, how about, did you see an ophthalmologist, you know, sometimes? I've been to an ophthalmologist. And everything's fine with the eyes? Everything's fine with the eyes also. Okay. Um, I mean, it, so it looks like it's not something serious, um, you know, if the scan was negative. But definitely it's a nuisance for you because, oh, you know, it's, it's bothering very, you. Very, it's, it's debilitating. Where is the headache? Is it in the front, in the temple area, or where it's, is it? It's on the top of the head, mm -hmm. down across the forehead, and down the nose. And that's why I thought it was my sinuses. Mm -hmm. And the sinuses are fine. Yes, that's right. Right, and your blood pressure is fine, I guess. My yeah, blood I'm pressure sure. is fine, yeah. Blood pressure is How fine. do you feel? Are you depressed? I am getting depressed from it, yes. Yeah, but it, it's not that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Rita, how old are you? 70. Uh, 70. Yeah. Gee, that's your, your doctors may have asked, there's something called temporal arteritis. Which oh, I've can, heard of that, yeah. Right, which can occur at that age with headaches. There are other symptoms one might have. Does You mentioned the top of your head. When you comb your hair or if you put a hat on, does your scalp hurt at all? No. Okay. Um, no, and you told Dr. Capati no eye problems. Do you have any aches or pains in any of your muscles? Yeah, I forgot arthritis. Okay. One of the things you might want to do, and a as Dr. Garner, my brother alluded to, depression can certainly cause headaches or exacerbate them, and that's something you need to examine. But I would go to your primary care physician and ask him or her to get a test called a sedimentation rate or another test called a C-reactive protein, 
which is signs of inflammation because this disease, this condition called temporal arteritis does occur more frequently in women over the age of 60 and it can come on with headaches. But I've, been, I've also been to a rheumatologist, Dr. Garjan, okay. and, and she gave me the autoimmune tests. Okay. And there is sedimentation in my body. Well, if the sedimentation rate is high, you may want to go back and discuss that with that doctor and see if, if the feeling is that you might need further testing to see if you have temporal arteritis. We're going to have to move on, but I think uh, you got some good leads there. And, you know, to get on and give us um, a call back and let us know, please, how you're doing. All right. Thank you so much, okay. doctor. We're All just right. going to take a very short break. And when we come back, we're going to get right back to your questions regarding orthopedics, hand surgery, rheumatology, and internal medicine. So don't go far. We're going to be right back. <laughs> Place your business on TV by becoming a sponsor to one of NET's family-friendly programs. See an increase in your revenue by reaching a potential audience of 4.3 million viewers in the tri-state area. We have a number of packages available and we'll even produce your commercial. For information, contact us at the number on your screen and get ready to see yourself on NET. so many calls so we're going to our rapid fire segment where each doctor will take about 30 seconds to answer your question if it takes longer than that then we're going to have to come back to it next week and we're going to go first to George hi George yes hi so you're in the rapid fire segment what's what's your question hi how you doing how are you how you doing you used your time up sorry no okay <laughs> okay no how are you yes, we're happy I to have, have you uh, I'm I sorry I have a question for Dr. Bruce Garner he's right here but um, we, what is it we're waiting. Uh, one of my friends was recently diagnosed with gout. Okay. I'm sorry to hear that. If he has good insurance, I'd be the happy to see him in my office. We were talking about certain types of food. Okay, let's answer that question. Okay, um, there are certain types of food, food to keep away that from. That should be avoided in patients with this medical condition. Very I would appreciate well, Dr. Garner on this issue. George, you killed okay, the Okay, if I could get a word in that twice, George. <laughs> um, certainly you want to keep away from beer, you want to keep away from liquor, you want to keep away from certain kinds of meats. Red meat, lamb, turkey. A lot of people get gout around Thanksgiving. You want to keep away from shellfish, you want to keep away from um, dark meat fish, and you want to keep away from leafy green vegetables and non-diet soda. Thanks a lot, George. We're going to move on. We'll hear, hope, call us back next week when we'll have more time. We're going to go now to Joan for Dr. Levine. Hi, Joan. Hi. How are you doing? What's your question, please? Um, I'm having trouble with my left hand. Oh. I can't turn the palm up. It starts at the wrist. My wrist, I can't turn the, the wrist to get the palm to face up. I can only turn it part way. Hmm. Did my you thumb is up in the air. Mm -hmm. But the hand won't turn so that I can, I'm going for physical therapy, but it's not doing any good. Now, did you fall or hurt yourself at I any time? nothing, nothing. I have arthritis, so they think it's arthritis, but I can feel the pull from my wrist up to my elbow, and there's something there that won't let the palm of my hand come up. Hmm. You know, it sounds... When you turn your hand over like this, it's called supination. And that motion comes from both your wrist as well as your elbow. So it's important in physical therapy that not only do they work your wrist, but also work at your elbow to make sure that they can, that they're using those muscles as well to get the motion back. In addition, you may have arthritis, so you it's important to that. get an x-ray. And I had an x-ray and it showed nothing. It showed, it showed the fingers more than the mm. wrist. You know, the problem with x-rays is that you're not just looking at the bones, but also looking at the spaces between the bones. So certain small nuances like that can show certain signs of arthritis, or perhaps there's a tendon that's blocking motion. Joan, I'm going to have to rush on now, but again, there's more to it, so you either call back next week or we'll get you a referral. Okay? Okay, thanks. Take care. I can't do this rapid fire. It's too <laughs> uh, Judy, Judy. It's sabotaging you. Judy. Judy? Oh, yes. Hi. I'd like to speak to Dr. Levine. She's right here. Wow, she's become oh, very okay. tall. <laughs> Dr. Catapani. Yes, I had something to do. Uh, I was diagnosed with RA. Okay, yeah. RA, RA is rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, I was taking a prednisone. This is for my left arm, my left hand. I was on prednisone, but it blows you up, and I was also on methotrexylate. 
my doctor took me off it because I was getting dizzy. I just, I, but I'm back to base one where if I, I can't pick up anything from the floor or my, my fingers, my fingers aren't great. Okay. Um, okay, so we're going to go, we're going to answer it now. So I think with rheumatoid ar arthritis, there are a lot of medications that are on the market. I think Dr. Garner probably can, can uh, answer that part better which can definitely help the arthritis, your rheumatoid arthritis, uh, things that aren't steroids, which you can Humera. take. Um, it didn't work. It, I know, you know, it I, can work. I think also physical therapy is good. I didn't try the physical therapy yet. So you're going to try that, and you're going to give us a call back, please, because we, we okay. ran out of time. I can't do I it. I know. I feel I so know bad. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can you believe this? I mean, I, I've <laughs> got to start having less popular guests, because this is, we've got four lines blinking over here, and we, ca we can't do justice to it. Dr. Katapani, you never got out of the box. You're on deck <laughs> and never, for this rapid fire segment. Mm -hmm. But I want to, you know, thank my guest, Dr. Levine, Dr. Garner, Dr. Katapati for coming in. It's a great show. We have 12 weeks more up until March 27th, we have, and then we'll see what happens for the summer. But um, it's great to have everyone back for our 16th season, and we hope we're able to help you. Now remember, you should always be proactive about your own health. Speak to your doctors about your concerns, and like we spoke tonight, go for second or third opinions if you have to. Remember, no doctor should feel threatened if you ask for another opinion. You can visit our website at netny.net slash doctor, or you can read my weekly tablet. He, he can read the tablet. You can participate in our viewer surveys and watch past shows. Now, if you remember, um, tonight at 10 o'clock, you'll see the season finale from 15. It was a great show, right? Did you remember that show? Yeah, yeah of, of course. Of course, <laughs> best. And, best um, one yet. What we want to do is thank Linda Lapatosa, who's our quiz master and also helps in the production. And we want to wish all of you a great winter and stay healthy. And we're going to see you in the tablet. Take care.